Hi everyone, um, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me for Facebook Live today, um, where we are going to be discussing career exploration for newcomers to Canada. So the tips and information I'm gonna share with you today, um, they're, they're applicable for anyone, um, but my job here at Yes Employment is I work with newcomers, so sometimes I might uh, give some information about how things work here in Canada as well. Um, and one of the things that's really important um, when we're thinking about choosing a career, so whether you're um, you know, just graduating high school or whether you're new to the country and you'd like to make a career change, there's some really important things that you need to consider before making that choice. So I'm gonna be talking today about what those things are. And a lot of it centers around career and educational research. And a lot of people think that those two things are the same, um, and they're not. So it's really important to think about um, careers in Canada, uh, what a career means, thinking about the skills and the knowledge that you might need to do a specific job, and then also doing research about your educational options in order to get those jobs. And those are really important things to think about because some people think, oh, if they go to school and they take a program, then they're going to get a job in that field. And for a lot of people, that's not necessarily the case. So it's really, really important to do your research. And I'm going to talk about how to do that today on Facebook Live. Um, but the first thing to really think about is careers have changed. So, you know, a long time ago, even like 10, 15 years ago, certainly 20 years ago, a lot of people had a traditional career. So they would graduate from school, whether it was high school or post-secondary, and they would start a new job. And many, many people would stay with that company. So they would get promoted a couple times, perhaps, um, and then they would retire. From this company you know they may have made a job change because they moved or their promotion required them you know to move to a different city to work for the same company or a lot of people would still stay within that that career uh, that they had been doing um, and so that's kind of how careers used to be uh, so it was very linear everything was in a line right you start a new job stay with the company uh, maybe work for you know a different company but doing the same type of job and then you would retire um, and now careers are no longer linear um, it's expected that somebody you know who's working right now so me for example I'm on my second career right now I used to be a kindergarten teacher uh, and now I support people to find work um, when they arrive in Canada and I might have another career um, a lot of people now are switching careers throughout their working life. And so it's really, really important to know that and to pay attention if you're thinking of paying for school. So if you're thinking of going to college or university to choose something that's gonna allow you that flexibility because that's expected now. People are not just gonna have one career, they might have two or three um, in their working lifetime. So that's the first bit of important information to consider. Um, and there's a lot of other things that you should be thinking about if you're you know, thinking about mm, what kind of career should I do? Um, and it really has to start with yourself. So think about your interests. Um, if you have prior education, um, you know, maybe you might choose something similar. Think about your work experience. You know, really consider who you are, um, your work experience and your knowledge. Also your values and your motivations. A lot of people when I talk with them, you know, they focus on things like well, how much money am I going to make um, in this career? What am I going to be doing all day? But think about your values. What's important to you? What motivates you? And the most important question is how do you define success? So how do you know if you're successful? And some people, they believe that if they make lots of money, that they're successful. Um, you know, some people believe that if they're constantly learning something new and challenging themselves, that they're successful. Um, and other people, you know, they feel successful if they've gone to work and, and they've really felt like they've helped people, like they've made a difference. Um, and for me, that's how I define success, is if I'm helping people and making a difference. So it's really important to consider that when you're thinking about, you know, the future job that you might want to do, your future career. 
how are you going to know if you're going to be successful? Um, you know, if I went to work for a company that only focused on making money, I wouldn't be happy there. I mean, I could probably do it, but I wouldn't truly be happy because that's not what motivates me. It's helping people. And also I like a challenge. I like to do new things all the time. Um, so those are things that are really important for me. Um, another thing to consider as well is the working condition. So how do you like to work? And again, when I talk to clients, this is something that I ask them and a lot of them haven't really thought about how they like to work. Do you like to work alone? Do you like to work with a team? Or do you like a combination of the two? Um, you know, so there's a big difference between, you know, being part of a team like we are here at Yes Employment, um, where we do have to work together, um, but we have our own clients. So in that way, I do actually get to work alone, even though I'm working with other people and I can ask them for their help or their advice. Um, you know, contrast that to, you know, working as part of a team to complete one project. So those are two very different things as well. And think about which one you would prefer, how you like to work, or do you like to work completely alone? You know, people give you a task and you just go do it. Um, you know, do you like variety? So for me, I really like to come to work every day and have new challenges, you know, new jobs that my clients are applying for and like, let's write a cover letter for that. And, you know, every day is different. And I love that. Um, some people though, do not like that at all. In fact, they hate that. And they really like going into work knowing exactly what's going to happen and they like doing repetitive tasks or the same tasks over and over again. So that's another thing to consider as well when you're making your choice. Um, also, do you like to work in a fast paced environment um, or do you like things that are more slow as well? Really important to think about uh, because my job sometimes is very fast paced and sometimes you're always changing priorities depending on what's happening. Um, so again, I really like that, but some people would find that really challenging. So all those things are really important to think about. Um, and then another factor that I really like to talk about um, is, are you an introvert or an extrovert? And a lot of people um, get those two um, things confused or they, they don't understand what they are. So being an introvert or an extrovert, it's basically where you get your energy from. So do you get your energy from being alone and recharging or do you get your energy from being around other people so introverts and I'm you know somewhat of an introvert I need time alone in order to recharge my batteries so I can feel energetic so I can do my job extroverts they get their energy from being around other people so they're kind of the opposite <laughs> and there's actually somewhere in the middle called an ambivert I think that's me because I like to be around other people, but then I do need some alone time. So my job allows me to do that. When I'm in my office doing, you know, quiet paperwork, that's when I'm recharging my battery. So I have a nice balance of meeting with people and talking with people um, and having some alone time as well. When I was in the classroom and being a kindergarten teacher, you get absolutely zero time <laughs> by yourself. And so that's really hard. And you know, I, I would go home very tired at the end of the day. And so it, it's a really, um, it's a really important thing to think about as well as how do you, where do you get your energy from? Because there are certain types of jobs. So within a career, you might have, you know, for example, a teacher who teaches classes, you know, online might have a lot more alone time than someone teaching in a kindergarten classroom. So again, you can still choose a career, but the jobs within that, you have to be aware of who you are, how you like to work. Um, how do you define success? Those are the things that are really important and they're going to lead you to the job that you're going to be happy in. Um, and another thing to think about too, especially if you've had previous careers, is what's the common thread that links all the jobs that you've really enjoyed? Um, so I've done lots of things. I was, uh, when I was 14, I was a ski instructor for kids. Um, I taught kindergarten. I was a camp counselor at a summer camp. Um, you know, now I work as an employment consultant and all the things, you know, the kind of the common thread that links all of those things is helping people. Um, so for me, that's a really important thing and making a difference. So think about that. If you've had some job experience, what's the thing that, that linked 
all the things that you really liked and that's going to give you a clue about maybe some jobs that might be suitable for you so that self-knowledge part is so 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 important so if you haven't done that already really sit down and think about all the things that i just mentioned maybe even write them down um, so that you have them if you're considering a job you can go back to that and say well you know what this job is not in line with my values um, like I would find it really difficult to work for a company that was you know dumping toxic waste in the ocean um, because I'm all about saving the planet um, so that would be very difficult for me so really think about all that self-knowledge is so 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 important the second part of choosing a job and certainly a career is the labor market information so all of that means is the data and information related to employment and training um, and I'm going to talk about what that is and how you can find that information so that you can make the right career choices. So, you know, some of the things when we think about labor market information is like how big the region is. So North Bay, like we're a, we're a fairly small city, so we have to consider what skills are needed in our city, what jobs are needed, um, and then also thinking about the future as well. So what jobs are going to be in demand um, in the future? And you can find this information, uh, the Labor Market Group, one of our community partners, they have some great information on their website. Um, and then you can also look on Job Bank Explore Career section. Um, but one of the things that I think is really important to do is to speak with professionals who are working in the field because they're already there, they're doing it, and they're going to be a really good source of information as to you know where their careers, where their jobs are going in the future so that's a really important thing to do and I'm going to talk about um, how to do that in just a minute um, but it's also important to do post-secondary program research so it's important to consider you know should you get a go to college or go to university what program should you take um, and there's certain things that you need to ask because in Canada um, Colleges and universities offer a wide range of programs, but some of them will are more likely to lead to an actual job, depending on the region that you're working in, depending on what certification you're going to receive. Um, so it's really important to do that research. And it's important, again, not only to talk to um, the college or the university, but to also talk to people who are doing the job that you want to do um, because you might be surprised at how they actually ended up there. So if you're talking, uh, if you're going into a college or a university to go on a tour or talk to someone, it's really important to ask them, you know, what certification am I going to receive? If I take this program, am I going to receive a certification and what is it? You know, is it a certificate? Is it a, a diploma? Is it a degree? Those are things that are really important to know. Um, is it accepted or needed by employers is another really good question. Um, another good question is, will I have to do more training after this program in order to do the career that I want to do? Okay, that's another really good question. Um, and is it mandatory to do this training to do the career that I want to do? Because sometimes, um, you know, there's programs out there that are that are great to take but you don't actually have to take them. So those are really important questions to ask. Um, and also asking questions about, you know, in order to do this career, do I have to apply to a regulatory body? Another really important thing to know, um, a lot of professions uh, in Canada, but certainly in Ontario, are regulated. So that means that there is a college of, you know, nurses, there's a college of dental surgeons, there's a college of teachers, and they don't offer courses. They are just um, a group of individuals who get to decide who works in the profession. And so you have to apply to them, even if you trained in Ontario, and even if you trained in Canada. So that's another really important question to ask. Once I graduate, do I have to apply to one of these regulatory bodies? Or can I just start working? So I, I personally think, like I said before, it's really important to talk to people who are working in the field or who have worked in the field in that career that you want to do. And one way that you can talk to these individuals is through doing an informational interview. 
So an informational interview is not a traditional job interview. You're not applying for a job. What you are doing is you are asking questions of someone who's working in this field. So you might ask them and say, you know, would you have, you know, 20 minutes to join me for coffee uh, and maybe answer some questions that I have, or maybe, you know, join me on Zoom for 20 minutes um, and I might have some questions for you. So it's, you know, it's not for a job. It's for you to get information about this career um, and also about this person's career path because you might be surprised at how they ended up in this job. Um, for instance, I'm a trained teacher um, and a lot of the skills that I use in teaching, I use in my job now. Um, and so that's been my career path, which a lot of people are actually surprised about when they meet me and they hear what I do and they hear my career path. So some questions uh, that are really good to ask if you are doing it, you know what, there's so many questions on Google, um, but here's some ones that I think are really good. Um, asking the person you're talking with, could you talk me through your career path? You know, why did you choose this career? What are the major parts of your job on a daily basis? So what do you do all day? <laughs> um, you know, how is the economy affecting this industry? What qualities and skills are necessary to excel in this career? Um, you know, for me, you have to like working with people in my job. If you don't like working with people, you're not going to be successful. Um, what previous experience has helped you most in this job? What is the best way to enter this occupation? What other kinds of workers frequently interact with in this position? So who do you, you know, what other types of workers do you work with? So we have community partners, um, you know, in like Canadian Mental Health, Ontario Works, we work with the, I work with the Multicultural Center. Um, so that's a really good way for you to kind of learn, okay, what are some other related careers that might be out there? And like I said, if you go and Google, there's tons of questions out there to help you, but this is really so that you can get some information um, about the career that you're considering, okay? And I mentioned before about uh, the regulatory bodies. Uh, so this is for anyone who um, is new to Canada and is considering, um, you know, maybe trying to get back into the career that they were doing or possibly choosing a related career. Um, you need to know if your career is regulated or not. That's a really important thing. And so before you get any of your credentials assessed or anything like that, you have to go to that regulatory body. They're the ones that you have to go to first and they're going to advise you on what you need to do. So once you've you know, considered all of these factors and put it together, then it's time for you to decide um, on a new career and decide if that new career is going to take you to you know, post-secondary to college or university um, or maybe you just need to do a few micro credentials. So like little tiny short courses that give you specific, specific skills that you can put on your resume and that will help you uh, in this new career. But it's really, really important to combine all that knowledge, that self-knowledge, the labor market information, educational research, professional research, so that you can make um, the right decision for you. So thank you very much for joining me on Facebook Live today. It's been awesome um, and I hope everyone has uh, wonderful holidays and uh, I'll be doing some more Facebook Lives in the new year, so stay tuned. Thanks very much.